Which Democrat would be the strongest nominee in 2024? Today in Political Excess, we're going to do a tier ranking and go through all the candidates on this list. I will do one for the Republicans coming up, but today it's for the Democrats, and there's a lot of different tier rankings you could do. Some of them have dozens and dozens of candidates, and sometimes it can get out of hand. This one has a medium amount of candidates, so I figured I'd try this one. So let's get started here. I've got tiers A, B, C, D, and F. This also is going to be for how likely they are to get through the primary as well as win in a general election. So we got to keep that in mind as we go through this. But let's see who the first person is, and it looks like it is Michelle Obama. Now, I think she would be pretty strong in a primary and in a general election. I don't think she would be at the absolute top, but I will put her in the B tier. The only thing against her is she's just not actively in politics, so there could be something that turns off some of the electorate because she's kind of in the background, but I still think she'd be strong in a primary as well as in a general election. Next, we've got Mary Peltola. She's the new Democrat from Alaska in the U.S. House, and I guess from what I hear, she is, does seem kind of moderate, and that's probably going to work in Alaska. She won re-election, although it was in a new ranked choice vote against Sarah Palin. So who knows what else she'll do next time. But for now, she doesn't have much executive experience. Maybe she'll run for Senate or governor at some point. For president right now, she's just too new and too moderate. I don't think she would win in a primary. So that's why she would have to go down to the D tier. And plus, she needs to get more of a track record just in general. And I think in a general, she would probably have a lot of appeal. But in a primary, I don't think she'd make it through. Next, we've got Eric Adams, mayor of New York City. Um, I've heard mixed things about him. He's upset some people and others he seems to have an appeal with. I'll put him in C. I want to see more of his track record over the next couple of years. But he seems like kind of a middle-of-the-road kind of guy. Might do okay in a primary and might do okay in a general. Next, we've got Gretchen Whitmer, governor of Michigan. She just won re-election. And I think she probably would do pretty well in a primary. I think she'd get a lot of that establishment behind her. I think the progressives are going to think she's... Not progressive enough. I'll put her in B. She'd probably do pretty well in a general if she made it through primary, which I think she would have a reasonable chance to do so. Next, Kamala Harris. Let's see. In a primary, I think she would probably clear the field because she's already the vice president. She's adored by the establishment. I think a lot of voters, though, progressives, don't like her. And anybody that's not that liberal establishment, they're not going to like her at all in a general election. So... I tend to put her a little bit lower, probably in the D tier. She has some issues. She's probably viewed as a little bit weaker of a vice president. So I'm going to put her in D, maybe bump her up to C. Not the worst candidate, but far from the top. Next, we've got Hillary Clinton. I guess this is going to have to go in F. I mean, if people are burnt out from Donald Trump, I think on the Democratic side, they're going to be burnt out. From Hillary Clinton, could she win in a primary? I don't know. She could make a good run at it, probably. In a general, I think she would probably flop up against most candidates. Next, we have Jared Polis, governor of Colorado. I think he would actually end up doing pretty well. I tend to view him up in the B tier. He's a little bit under the radar. He won re-election by a wide margin in the midterms. I think he could probably do a little bit of gap bridging between the moderates and progressives. But in a primary, he's not as well known, so people might not come out for him that much. He would do stronger in a general election. Now, in a primary election, I still think he would do reasonably well. I'm just not sure if his status is high enough for the B tier. So I could see putting him in C, but I'll put him in B. I tend to think he would end up doing fairly well. Next, Michael Bennett, senator from Colorado. I don't know. I think he seems kind of bland to me. I don't think he would excite many people. I'm going to put him down in the D tier. I don't think he'd get through a primary. Next, Roy Cooper, governor of North Carolina. He's going to be viewed as too moderate for the base. In a general, he would do a little bit better, but I don't think he'd make it to a general. He's going in D tier. Next, we have Josh Shapiro, who will be the governor of Pennsylvania. I know he's been in public office prior to becoming the governor, and we're going to see what he does as governor, but we'll put him in C. It's a little bit too early for... Josh Shapiro, but I think he'd probably do well enough. Next, we've got Biden. He's got to have to go in A. Somebody's got to go in A, and it's going to have to be the incumbent if it's nobody else. And moving on, we have Raphael Warnock, senator from Georgia. I don't think he would really do much in a Democratic primary. I don't think he has the right kind of personality. In a general election, he'd do a little bit better. I think as a running mate, he'd do a lot better. So he'd be better suited for vice president. But for president, 
He's just not going to cut it for me. Next, Mark Kelly, senator from Arizona. We'll put him in the, it's borderline C and D for me. Similar to Raphael Warnock, he's probably better suited as a running mate. I just don't see executive experience coming from Mark Kelly, but not the worst candidate. J.B. Pritzker, governor of Illinois. There's been talk about him jumping into it. He's got a ton of money. Uh, I don't see him having a lot of success. I know the money would get him kind of far, so we'll put him in C tier. But I think once he gets out there, I think that he would get beat up pretty bad for probably being out of touch. And in a general, he'd be okay. Not too strong, not too weak. Next, AOC primary she would do probably pretty well firing up the base but now that all depends on actually how she runs if she runs like how she did prior to getting into politics as an outsider and a progressive anti-establishment and anti-corporate i think she would do better but then the establishment would come after her so it's hard to say but we'll put her in d tier next tony evers governor of wisconsin he is very milk toast he is bland um but then again a lot of people said the same about joe biden Joe Biden won it. I would say the difference there is Joe Biden had a long political history. Tony Evers, it's a little bit different story with him. I don't see him doing much. Certainly not in a primary, in a general election. He would probably be a little bit stronger. Next, Elizabeth Warren. Um, I think people might be a little bit tired of Elizabeth Warren in some sense. She'll go up in the, I guess, the C tier. We'll just leave it at that. Sherrod Brown. In a general, I think he would do fairly well. U.S. Senator from Ohio. I will put him into B tier. I think Sherrod Brown has a shot to win a primary. He would probably have to go a little bit toward the left at some of his social positions. That would come back to hurt him. So it's borderline C and B. Next, this is Senator John Ossoff from Georgia. I hear he's some up-and-comer. It's just too early for John Ossoff. I think he would probably be better again, like Raphael Warnock, as a running mate. He's too young. People don't know who this guy is at all. We'll put him in D. Next, Andy Bashir. There's no way Andy Bashir would win a primary. He would have to run hard to his left, and I don't think that would even be enough. I'm going to put him in F. In a general election, much better, but he wouldn't get near a general election. Amy Klobuchar is next from Minnesota. She already ran once. She did a little bit, not the worst, but not a whole lot. To me, she's D material. I think she's better suited as a running mate. I just don't see her having a commanding presence running a national campaign. Next, Pete Buttigieg. This guy is highly touted as the next big thing. We got to be ready for Pete. I don't know how well he would do. I think he's supposed to go in the A or B tier. For me, I think he's a little bit weaker than that. You could go B or C. I don't guess I don't want to lean too heavily on my own opinion. I'll put him in a low B because the polling does show he seems to be one of the top candidates. He'd probably have a reasonable shot in a general. I've done a lot of hypotheticals with him, and he does seem to do fairly well. Next, we've got Gavin Newsom of California. I'll put him in B. He seems reasonably strong. Cory Booker is next, senator from New Jersey. He also ran before. He seems to come off as friendly and relatable, but I don't think he has much staying power. I'm going to put him in the D tier. Maybe he does better if he runs again. But Cory Booker just seems to never have taken off too much, even though he does seem like a nice guy. And finally, Bernie Sanders. We can't count out Bernie Sanders. He used to be pretty anti-establishment, and they came after him. He's maybe softened up a little bit on that, so I'm not sure. I will settle on a C tier for Bernie Sanders. And those are the tiers. And this is a good amount of candidates. Got a lot of variety on here. I'm sure you could tweak some of these here and there, but this is what I settled on. Let me know in the comments, what do you think of these tiers? What changes would you make? Let me know down below. And on your way out, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.